Welcome back to another episode of We Don't Know What to Watch, the podcast where two guys watch random movies thanks to the power of the algorithm on the internet through various streaming services, and then we talk about them because that's what we do. And with me, as always, is the wonderful, the incredible, the beautiful Kyle Mulford, and I'm Noah Saturn. How are you doing, Kyle? Oh, don't bother me. I am a, I am a stalking. I mean, a, a randomly, coincidentally running into a Principessa. Yeah. <laughs> I, I'm doing all right. <laughs> Peter, just because you have a mustache doesn't mean you can speak Italian. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think I spoke it about as good as the English dub of this movie. So, <laughs> um, Speaking of that, <laughs> let's get into it. What did we watch? We watched uh, Life is Beautiful. Life is a beautiful. <laughs> uh, yeah, and you know... We watched this streaming on HBO Max, and I know this was like, this was a foreign film, and there was no way to switch it over to actually Italian. So, like, that really is how overly pronounced, like, and weird the accents are in the movie. And then it's, it almost like looks like a badly dubbed martial arts movie, you know, like how it's like nothing matches what the lips are saying because it's a different language, obviously. So it's like, it was weird watching this dubbed. <laughs> yeah, that is interesting that they only had the dub version, but, but I don't know. I don't know if that's why I found some of the scenes even funnier than they might've been. <laughs> Maybe it, to, it was to a point where it almost seemed like self parody. Yeah. I, I was, I was like, I don't know if I could, I don't know if I want to watch this in Italian. Like it might be too serious for me. (laughs) I I don't know. We can get into that though. This, this was a weird movie. Yeah. um, If I just see a one, like what three Oscars or something. It was up for, well, it was nominated for best actor, best score, best foreign language film, best picture, best director, best screenplay and best editing. And it won best actor score and foreign language film. So in this, and it says uh, this is the second time that it, for an actor to direct himself in an Academy award winning role. And the first time was Lawrence Olivier in Hamlet in 1948. Mm-hmm. So that's interesting, but yeah, up for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven Academy awards and won three of them. And I still, to this day, remember Benito. Cause I, I watch the Oscars every year. I have since I was a kid and I know some people are jaded on the Oscars now, but like, I'm like, it's a tradition. I still have, on, you know, I still remember this one when he won and got up and walked across the tops of the seats to get to the stage. Yeah. It was just insane up on stage. <laughs> this acceptance speech. The guy, like, the guy is super weird. And after having watched that, I'm going, Oh, I don't know if he was playing a character in life is beautiful. <laughs> Or if he was just being himself. Uh, but uh, I suppose we can do a quick run on what this movie is about. It's basically this guy, this Italian. He wants to... His uncle... Was it his uncle who owns some shop or something like that? Like a head waiter at a fancy restaurant. Yeah, yeah. That his uncle owned or whatever. And, and he became a waiter there, but he wants to own a bookstore. And he keeps running into this woman who like he ends up falling in love with. He like literally like she falls into his arm in one scene and he runs into her with a bike. And then, and then his meetings got less coincidental. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, um, and then, you know, this movie, when you read synopsis and everything, it's about going to this concentration camp and like him trying to make the best of it for his son and like not let his son know what's really going on. That's not until like, 55 minutes into the film yeah, that's like, it, it almost feels like two separate movies it really did and the thing is is i was really enjoying the first half of the movie mm-hmm. and then it got to the second half and i wasn't sure what to think about it just because i believe that he kind of bases on his father was in a concentration camp mm-hmm. although he he wasn't jewish i think i i think i read but like he kind of based off that but like this isn't what his father did there, but, um, but he kind of got some of his ideas from his father being in the concentration camp. Now, this is one thing that, uh, I I read was Mel Brooks did not like this film because Mel Brooks will make fun of Nazis, all that stuff. And he said, this one kind of made light of 
constant, he, he felt it made light of concentration camps. And I was like borderline on that. I was like, I understand what he was doing for his son. And I couldn't, I couldn't decide for myself whether it was too lighthearted about concentration camps Mm -hmm. because it was very touching what he was doing. So basically that woman he runs into, there's a whole sequence that like, like we said, feels like a completely different movie. And then he finally marries her and then it cuts to they're married and they have like a six year old, five, six year old kid. And then this is the beginning of the, you know, Nazis coming into Italy and taking people away and, all three of them end up in a concentration camp along with his uncle. And he tries to keep things lighthearted by telling his son, it's all a game. And at the end they win a tank if they score the most points, you know, and then he has the kid hiding out all the time and all this stuff. So, and yeah, that, yeah, it's, it's, it's a hard sit for sure, especially. And it does just feel very weirdly down the middle because the first half is definitely almost more like a goofy, almost rom-com very much kind of more like a Charlie Chaplin as physical comedian. I got a lot of Marx Brothers vibe from it. Mhm. Oh, I can see that too. Cuz with his like kind of a mix between some of the brothers because he has a lot of the physical comedy kind of like you said with Charlie Chaplin Buster Keaton the kind of that but also some of his lines and like his quick delivery with um jokes and everything like really gave me a Groucho Marx feel. And mm-hmm. And I kind of enjoyed it because it was really put together well, the first half of the movie with all of the, you know, the the coincidences. And then like, you know, this whole thing with uh, him always trying to steal this one dude's hat and that becomes a running gag. And then later that pays off in a joke. And then, uh, you know, kind of like different things happening throughout the town um, that if you're just paying attention to all the little things that are happening, then later it culminates into like a final you know, punchline for like this night that he has with this woman. Mm -hmm. And and I kind of liked that scene where he's going through, he's like, uh, Mary, the key. And they throw the key out the window. And then, and then she's like, Oh, uh, find this guy a dry hat. Cause she's like, I'll play along with this too. And then the guy passes by and gives him a dry hat and like, and it Mm -hmm. all plays really well. And, and it's kind of fun, but, but yeah. And then all of a sudden, the second half of the movie is a completely different movie where they're in a concentration camp and you literally see a like two story pile of dead bodies at one point. Damn Nazis ruin everything. I know. Right. So I, I understand why this was like, you know, a big deal when it came out and all this stuff. And it's, it's an interesting movie. It's almost more of a interesting movie than a good one. Yeah, more of a case study than a good one. But there are some parts that I thought were pretty well thought out throughout the film, like the scenes where he was first a waiter with this doctor who was just kind of obsessed with riddles and then later finds out the doctor is like a captain at this concentration camp and he says, hey, it's me, remember, can you help me? And then the doctor still only sees him as just some guy who likes riddles and doesn't really care about his humanity. I thought that was a powerful scene. Yeah, that was when he thought that he was going to help him out. And then he just realized, oh, he's just like, oh, he really, yeah, he just like, he really just wants the answer to riddles. That's all he wants. <laughs> um, he doesn't care. But um, yeah, and, th- and that is one thing that like, even though the two halves felt like completely different movies, they did tie them together with stuff like that, where like there were relationships like him and the doctor. And then that paid off in the concentration camp. And then like there were scenes with like the um, when the son was first introduced in the first half of the movie, you know, his I don't want to take a bath was kind of a scary scene and a heartbreaking really scene in the concentration camp area. And yeah, and, and I I think that's the biggest thing that I'm not sure that I really cared about it was because it felt like two completely different movies and they just Mm -hmm. didn't go together well because of how serious, even though he was still being goofball, how serious the second half was. Yeah, I mean, it's an extremely, extremely, extremely heavy subject. That's obvious. And because of this tone of this movie, it kind of makes it hard to talk about because you want to give it the seriousness it deserves. But it's just so weird. Yeah, because the first half of the movie, you are just like, 
laughing at all his antics and Mm -hmm. it's really quite enjoyable and i and then the second half of the movie by the end of the movie you're like you're you're almost heartbroken at the end of the Mm -hmm. movie it's just but yeah it's a tearjerker ending for sure yeah um but 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 it also is that tearjerker in a way that is sad because of one thing that happens but also gives like the son this this hope even though he was in this camp Mm -hmm. you know like if there's anything he left for his son, it's the fact that life is beautiful. So like it's, you know, and, and, and let he protected him through that whole ordeal and let him come out the other side, still thinking there was, there was hope in life. And so, I mean, it really was cu- quite touching. And yeah, that's an incredible statement of how, you know, what a parent would do, I guess, try and, you know, help their kids stay an optimist, even in the darkest of times like say a pandemic or something. Yeah. Where, where you're going and, and, you know, as a parent, I can never relate to the Holocaust. That's just silly. But like, as a parent, I can kind of relate to the feeling of being stressed about things, but having to be strong and goof with your kids and, you know, show them that, you know, everything's okay. Even when there's times when things aren't okay. You know, I, so I, I, I could relate to that aspect of that in, in, in just going, yeah, that's what you would do for your kid. You would do, you would do anything. You would hide the fact that you are utterly terrified just to make sure your kid is not terrified. So Mm -hmm. hide the fact that, you know, you're living like paycheck to paycheck, barely making a buy. Yeah. Cause you want your kid to still have a happy childhood. Exactly. So yeah. And I, I, I don't know, you know, there's not a lot I feel like you can say about this movie because it's kind of a screwball comedy at the beginning and a weirdly touching yet kind of weird second half. Mm -hmm. And so, um, you know, and and it does have those those moments, those character moments that it makes it hard whether you want to recommend it or not. And 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 I think that. I mean, I'm I'm gonna go to that already. You know, this might be a short episode, but I'm I'm gonna go to. I would recommend watching it once. It's it's. That's kind of where I'm at too. Like I, as I was telling like someone about, it, I was like, yeah, I wa- I would watch this movie. I, I saw this movie once. I'm glad I watched it, but I would probably never watch it again. Yeah, I would watch the first half again. Mm-hmm. Because, like I said, I can't stress enough that like I really thought that was so fun and funny and just it just really like it like you said it, it felt like the old side you know the old movies like a mix between chaplin and Marx and and all that so um but uh yeah other than that uh, i don't know roberto benini hasn't really been on anybody's radar since then he did pinocchio and got a razzie for that <laughs> <laughs> i was uh, wondering if you're gonna bring that up uh Dora, his wife in the movie, was actually played by Nicoletta Brasci, who mm-hmm. is his real life wife since 1991, I think. And I was kind of looking. I think she's been in several movies that he's been in. Mm-hmm. So, so, but then um, the kid who played his son three years later, uh, you know, I talked about this on our last podcast, uh, Gladiator. He played Maximus's son. So three years later, he was in a movie for but. 30 seconds because Max was his son. Spoiler dies at the beginning. <laughs> Another Italian movie. Well, it's, it takes place in Italy, I guess. <laughs> yeah. It's, it, yeah. So, but uh, I don't know if he's done much since then, but yeah, Roberto Benini, we read, uh, he came out of nowhere with this movie. It felt like, mm-hmm. and everybody's like, well, who's this guy? And let's give him lots of Oscars. And, and then all of a sudden, then, the next thing, the next thing you ever hear about, I know, I don't think it was his next movie, but the next thing you hear about is Pinocchio and the Rassi. It's just like, okay, he must have been like a one-hit wonder there. <laughs> yeah, and you know, he has done some other stuff, and apparently he has done more a lot of like some television and work and other stuff in his home of Italy. And even though like Pinocchio didn't do well here, it actually did pretty well over there. So then, like, yeah, I thought he was funny in this movie. Mm-hmm. So he's still working. He did. Apparently he's done like some sort of one man show type tours. Apparently, you know, he he is a pretty well liked comedian in Italy. Maybe he just sounds better in Italian. So, 
That could be. I, I would like I would like to have seen the um the actual Italian dub instead of instead of the English dub, just to see what kind of difference that would make. Because mm-hmm. like I said, a lot of times when you do an English dub on a live action film, it really like gives us this weird goofy quality and i don't know like how that affects how you view the movie too is 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 it as funny or less funny or more funny yeah in its native language <laughs> so but uh that's uh i i don't have much else to say about this movie because yeah just it, it, interesting and i would recommend checking it out once it's on hbo mm-hmm. max yeah that's uh that's i'm um, right there with you uh, what about for a double feature? I think I'll go first since I have one in mind. When making, I guess, a, 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 a film with humor about a heavy subject, I think I would pick uh, Jojo Rabbit as a double feature. Oh, that's a really good pick. I, I recently watched that one, and that's a wonderful film. I would definitely watch Jojo Rabbit again because I feel like it has a bit more, I guess, narrative cohesion for sure. Yeah, I agree and, with that. Uh, so, it is some great performances all around the cast and definitely has feels like a it centers a relationship more than just, you know, I just like that film a little bit better. It just feels, I guess, more polished overall. Yeah. And it doesn't feel as weird about even though it's also making jokes about like Hitler being a, you know, imaginary friend and all of this stuff. And but the the progress of that arc, though is wonderful like how hitler changes as the boy's mind starts changing about hitler so i thought that was that that was a that was wonderful progression and how that played out at the end so um i was actually going to go with just because the beginning was so kind of screwball comedy in a kind of groucho marx kind of way i was going to go with the um is it duck soup the one where with fredonia Yes, duck soup. Yeah, because I was get I was getting that Groucho Marx vibe, and I was like, that one's also at the end. You know, there's humor with war and all that, but like it's more lighthearted, and it's not dealing with a real world like concentration camp type stuff. So it's kind of like the humor during wartime plays better for me. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, but that's a yeah that that'd be my recommendation. So yeah, that's a life is beautiful. Oh, yeah. A good film, watch it once, definitely. And if you don't like it, obviously that's very acceptable. There's plenty of reasons not to. But it is well made, I think, on its own terms. And that's, yeah, it's other than that, it's just kind of hard to talk about. Yeah, I'd uh, I'd be interested to hear. If anybody watch, listens to this, uh, let us know in the comments uh, if you've seen it and what your thoughts are on this film. But uh Till then, why don't we uh, pick out our next film here? Gonna pull up the old Spinneroo. 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 All genres. Um, after being held captive in an Afghan cave, billionaire engineer. Engineer Tony Stark creates a unique weaponized suit of armor to fight evil. <laughs> no, <laughs> I don't believe you spun that one on the first try. <laughs> I did. That was first try right there. All right. I believe you. So, well, you know, we are doing all streaming. And now that uh, Disney Plus has like all of the. <laughs> Fair enough. I mean, there's like 30 of those movies. So. There there are, you know, because I know we did Thor. Mm-hmm. And then have we done another one or is it just Thor? Just Thor. Okay. So, yeah. So this will, this will actually be a good one to go back to because I remember really liking this. And this would be a fun one to rewatch anyway to see how it's aged now that we've gotten like, you know, how many years of these movies. This was 2008. So 20 years. 12. No, 10. 12 years of. Math. Uh, what's that? Math is hard, right? Math is math is hard. 12, 12 years of. um technological advancements as well, you know, and then getting all these other characters in and then the advancement of Tony Stark's character too. And through all these movies. So I'll, I'll be interested to rewatch this one. And uh, this one is uh, streaming on Disney plus. All right. Uh, you can find us on social media on Twitter. I'm at Noah underscore Saturn. That is spelled S A T E R N. And I am at awesome KM on Twitter. And we are also on, we don't know what to 
or at we don't know what to watch on Instagram. And uh, until next time, I don't uh, uh, I don't know. I was going to do another Italian yeah. accent, but <laughs> until next time, Mario, on. your Prince of Pisa is in another castle. <laughs> Uh, I I don't know how to follow that. So uh, yeah. <laughs> I apologize to everyone for that. No, you don't. <laughs>